Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hardwick, formerly of Chris Hardwick's Gadget Prawn. It was never called that. All good things come to an end, and now it's time to say goodbye to a tech bum. Over the years, we did tons of amazing sketches. I, myself, found myself dressed in all kinds of get-ups, from Slave Leia to Phineas Duck Bucket. The creation of comedy sketches was truly a magical process to behold. Every Friday, comedy producer Mike Shaw would gather the grumbly writers to his desk to spitball ideas, and at first, the writers would give some earnest suggestions, but eventually, they would start around and saying crazy things, and eventually, Mike would throw his hands up in frustration, and then everyone would wander back to their desks with their heads hung low. Let's kick off Attack of the Show, happy, happy, big time, lucky, fun time comedy hour. One of our favorite superhero sketches is this piece featuring Kevin and Olivia as Justice League's champions, the Wonder Twins. Now, this sketch not only captures the brother-sister chemistry that the two had as hosts of the show, but it also features a cameo by De Niro. Not Robert De Niro. De Niro, this is Jack Russell Terrier that belongs to our graphics guy, Adam. Oh, he's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Now I'm talking about Robert De Niro. Um, we have that ability, as you, know, as you guys probably know about twins, you can finish each other's... Sandwiches. No, sentences. It was the late 70s, mm -hmm. you know, late 70s. We were just on top of the world. Uh -huh. The most popular part of probably the greatest collection of superheroes ever, the Justice League. So yeah. what, what happened? Why'd you get kicked out? People probably realize that turning into water is lame. I mean, it's, it's awesome. water. How oh, lame so is this that? is my fault. You're still blaming me? Because you make it sound like I chose this power. At least I don't need some kind of helper monkey with a magic bucket to carry me around. I can walk on my own. So what happened to Gleek? Oh, he died. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, yeah, and turns out that uh, bucket of his, pretty important. <laughs> Solomon Grundy sounds on roof. Quick. Wonder Twin. Color. Activate. Form of water. Form of. Oh, crap. Are you kidding me? Hey, help. So, um, yeah, you know, finding work has been a little, little rough. We have a very specific skill set, and the jobs that we can get aren't all that amazing. So as you can see, I think our qualifications really speak for themselves. <laughs> you turn into water? Yes, sir. Yeah. You? I turn into animal. <laughs> oh, wow, that's neat. Can you use a mop? Ow. Shut up! But we do find ways to stretch each dollar. Well, you especially. Oh. <laughs> You're really good at it. Yeah. Hey, uh, you guys have money for the cable bill from last month? Because I'm just saying, every time I come in here, you guys are watching Animal Planet or the Weather Channel. I think it'd be nice if you chipped in once in a while. We uh, totally put it on the table back there, right, oh, yeah. right behind you. Oh, great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> guys, I don't see any uh, money, money here. No, actually, I'm still in the Justice League. Why? What, what did you hear? Our next sketch is the Fantastic Four musical. You know that thing we always wanted? This was actually the second in a series, the first being the X-Men musical. The third in the series was going to be a one-man show where the actor that played the Batman and the Joker, but sadly it never came to pass. The very talented Jonathan Mann composed the music for both this and the X-Men musical, and he's also responsible for the Bustus theme. Take that to trivia night. Every year, uh, we enter into the Comic-Con masquerade with a musical number. Last year, we got second place for our rendition of X-Men The Last Stand, the musical. And um, it was a wonderful production that um, unfortunately ended our marriage. <laughs> so now we're working on Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, the musical. The view from a silver surfboard makes me sad An intergalactic slave from the cradle to the grave Now I'm mad But oh, 
save the planet to save. He's gonna ride on the Milky Way wave. Ride all the wrongs. He's gonna do it today. And so we sing, go Silver Surfer, go Silver Surfer, go. His passion for the art uh, can become anally retentive. Oh, Mercury, Mars, I devour the stars, but I try to stay clear of Uranus. I love Stop! You. Stop! It's Galactus, not Gay Lactus, all right? I'm coming to sick. The door! Get up! You're dragging! No, it's no, sad. no. For the last time, you're off pitch. Damn it, people! We got two days! Get your superpowered together. I can see through you. I can see through you. I can see right through you. That's because, that's because I'm invisible. No, it's because you're a lying bitch. Those aren't the lyrics. They are the lyrics now. F you. Oh, that was real appropriate. Uh, fortunately, um, the ring is off my finger, and uh, I've moved on with my life. <laughs> I've moved into a studio apartment with two of our cast members. I, uh, I'm currently dating Rick, uh, the actor who plays Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. <laughs> Everything seems to be going my way. Look around, it's a bright, shiny, brand new day. Nobody can touch this flame. This life, it's just a game. But I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Kevin is incredibly uncomfortable with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm flaming. I'm flaming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, baby, baby. That's great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Take oh. it back to one. <laughs> So what? Are you take kidding? It, take it back. We've done it 20 times already. I can't flame any harder, Kevin. You flame on and on again until I tell you to stop. Now flame on! One and a two and a three. <laughs> Kevin directs the s. <laughs> no, no, break it up! 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 Break it it They think it's odd that I made a rock. You may think I don't care, but you stop and stare when by me you walk. It's clobbering time. <laughs> I mean, she's hot and all, but her singing is not good. I mean, I wish she could make her voice invisible, you know? <laughs> hey, what did you say? <laughs> what? Why don't you shut the hell up? Whoa, whoa hey, Kevin. Come hey, on. I will fire your ass right now. Just treat her right. Her voice makes angels weep. Which is more than I can say for you. You two make me sick. Um, you know, the point is that we are putting our differences aside so that we can make beautiful music together. Evil do as you know the score. You're in for one long hard war. I'll pound you into the ground, hot core. Cause you're dealing with the fantastic form. My rock, my length, my force, my flame. With a fantastic form. I don't know what the future has in store for us, but I bet we rekindle in a super heroic way. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying, like, uh, like, does all of you stretch? If you know what I mean. <laughs> Super-powered romantic I can stretch to fit your need And I've got this energy shield 
Our love is fantastic, super powered, romantic. When Galactus fills the sky, we'll defeat him by and by. We'll defeat him by and by. Oh, yes. Share it? God, I love you. Mm -hmm. The origin of time to sports is a simple one. Head writer Casey Schreiner summed it up like this. It channels the writing staff's lack of knowledge of sports. And when Pau Gasol showed up on set, he was as nice as he could be and good-natured about Kevin pretending to mispronounce his name over and over. Meanwhile, after we shot the sketch, there were lines of people from other departments in the building waiting to get his autograph. Apparently, it's a pretty big deal or something. Welcome back to another inning of Time to Sports. I'm Kevin Pereira, your ball master. Ball master. Right now, the Earth Bowl is happening in the country of Africa. It's the celebration of the ancient sport of kickball. It predates modern sporting inventions like commercials and fun. The rules here are simple. You can kick the ball with your feet or take the ball in the face, but do not punch it with your fist because fisting is a penalty. Fisting bad. All right, let's get right into the kickball highlights. An important aspect of the game is possum. And it's a feat of the week. Feats of the week. Number three. When players get too close to each other, it's an opportunity to fake horrific injury. During the game of kickball, powerhouse Brazil and starvation experts North Korea, this grass flop was so convincing that trained medicine men were summoned with a hospital bed. Nice flopping, player. Excellent flop. Flip flopper. Flippy to the flop. Number two. An Earth Bull miracle occurred this week when the good old USA met the team from Algae. The game was all but over except for the injury bonus round when Michael Landon punted the kickball and it accidentally slipped by the ceremonial handguard, resulting in a score point for Team American. USA. We're even great at the stuff we suck at. Number one. Goal number one. And that's how it means it's time for our intense one-on-one -on -one interview segment, Suits versus Skins. <laughs> Joining me now is one of the best ball handlers in Hooperball, Paul Gasol of the Los Angeles Lakesters. Paul, welcome to the show. My name is Pau, not Paul. Paul. Uh, it's, thought it was a typo. Now, this is Suits versus Skins, so if you'd like to remove the shirt, we can get the interview going. Uh, no, I think I'll keep it on. Paul, appreciate it, but it's, uh, it's suits versus skins, so one of us is suited. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody told me that I mean, when I've gotten here. All right. Well, fill up your fountain pens, get out the contracts. It's time to get down to the business. Get down to the business. You are a rather tall gentleman. That is the first thing that surprised me. Paul, tell me, do you think it's an unfair advantage being tall on that hardwood court? Uh, it definitely gives me an itch. And that was a Time to Sports exclusive, and you're welcome. You've been excluded. Now, you just won the National Basketball Cup. What was that like? Uh, it was very intense, mm -hmm. very intense. Uh, we played a very tough game, very tough series against the, you know, historical opponent. Mm -hmm. The so, Boston Irish. Well, they have some Irish mm -hmm. uh, in the team. Uh, Is it true that they play drunk? All right, let's get to our hot court fire zone question of the week. Hot zone. All right, let's get seven seconds on the answer clock. Are you ready for your hot court fire zone question of the week, Paul? Sure. You have seven seconds. Who is your favorite triple double? What are you talking about? Seriously? That is not correct. Actually, one more thing before you leave, if you don't mind. Okay. I don't normally do this, but uh, okay. a man of your stature and your 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 caliber simply can't leave without signing a little something for oh, me. If you, you wouldn't mind, uh, it right. would mean the world. Yes. To you? Uh, to, if you could just make it out to highest bidder. Okay, to highest bidder. All right. Just put that right there. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Gasol of the Los Angeles Lakesmen. Let me reiterate. We were live every day at 4 p.m. We had to put something on the air. That was part of the deal. So that is what's going on here. Summertime, folks. I think we all know what that means, right? Picnics, beach parties, and blockbusters. Boku box office. That's right, my friend. Fun fact for you fine folks. 
Last year, the Queen grossed a cool 56 million. And what was that movie about? Some old lady. It was a boring grandma movie for grandmas with grandkids. You're right, my friend. Now think, what if you could tap into the way that today's Gen Y hipsters monetize, huh? Legitocorp's done the research, my friend, and we have discovered that the single most buzzworthy item of this year is going to be the Apple iPhone. They're sure to be sold out, Rand. Mm -hmm. You get one? I'm trying. Off I'm the trying. eBay? Yes. No to your commitment. No <laughs> commitment. No, 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 no. Nights and weekends? After seven. So why not? A movie about a phone. Mm. Movie phone Ooh. will be the hit of the summer. Seen a little hesitation out there, Randy. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's a good thing. <laughs> Congratulations. You just passed the test. With flying colors. Hey, mm -hmm. they're not falling for the iPhone movie. No. No. We understand that. You guys want a guaranteed hit, and why wouldn't you? Legitocorp understands. You're damn right we do, Randy. You need a film that's based on a successful franchise. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man 3. The video game. The movie. Uh, think about it. A film based off the video game that was inspired by the successful movie. Is that a flag on the plate? No. Blow a whistle. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown and a clean break. Maximum snaz, Randy. We don't own Spider-Man. Of course you don't own Spider-Man. No, That's why you got to get in now on the ground floor while this puppy is hot. I'm telling you. Oh, what do you lock on to? Sacks of cash. And you want that. You do. Do you even know how movies work? See, it's funny. I see a mouth moving down at that end of the table, but you know what I hear? Bang, bang! Someone's ready for the big guns. <sighs> Prepare yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. What you're about to see is a trailer for a movie. I think we're gonna need a bigger penguin. Huh? Hey, that was fantastic. Really? Because we no, were, we're get the here. Security. Code red, Randy. Code red, Randy. When we return, Olivia Munn and Ava Murray spend hours in the makeup chair to create our version of Avatar. We'll tell you what James Cameron thought of our send-up when we showed it to him. Twilight. You can't escape it. You can try, but you'll fail. It is bringing more and more ladies to Comic Con, so deal with it. But in 2009, when the film first came out, Attack of the Show featured a sketch that pretty much summed up how the majority of the staff felt about the series. This was made for Fantastic Fest. By the way, it was one of the few sketches that we actually had auditions for. That's right, no pulling PAs away from labeling tapes or calling unemployed friends. For our Edward and Bella, we wanted only the finest actors, and so we did what any other big time Hollywood show would do. We put an ad on Craigslist. You're crazy cool. Your hair is awesome. Your skin is like flawless, yet you talk like you're from old history sometimes. How old are you? 17. How long have you been 17? A long time. What are you? You know what I am. You're dangerous. Yes. You're beautiful. Yes. You're a... Say it. Um. Say it. Out loud. A vampire. He's a vampire! 
here. Uh, the hell are you thinking? What's wrong with you? You kill vampires. You don't date them. Thank you. Oh, I'm just a helpless girl. You can fill me up, but please don't eat me. Oh. God, you're really annoying. Here. Use protection, all right? Come on. Olivia Munn and Ava Murray spent hours getting blue body makeup slapped on them so we could shoot our version of Avatar. Compared to what we usually spend on a sketch, this one was pretty big budget for us. We showed it to James Cameron, and his response was, Yep, that's why we use CG effects. Let's keep going. What do you mean? Go. You film and Louise, we'd like to talk to you about a fresh start on a new world. Velma and Louise, welcome to Pandora. You get me what I need, I'll see to it you get your legs back. Your real legs. Just relax and let your minds go blank. You look like a gay thundercat. Well, you look like a slutty super grover. Someone needs to go back to Fern Gully. Skank. Okay, Mystique, why don't you shape shift into something that's not a bitch? I want you to learn from the inside. I want you to gain their trust. You haven't gotten lost in the woods, have you? Get what team you're playing for? What? No, no, it's not like that. We're just friends. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Plus, Avatar Louise has really bony ankles. Excuse me? Oh, really gross. Don't tell her. The strong prey on the weak, and nobody does a thing. They have sent us a message that they can take whatever they want. I'm gonna kill all y'all, blue skin cat monkeys! But we will send them a message that they can all eat a big, hot, gourmet plate of Woo! Oh, yeah! Blue? Blue? I'm gunning for you, Phil and Louise. You hear me? Keep going. What do you mean? Go. You look like a wear smirk. You look like Frey Parmesan. <laughs> In minutes, Olivia Munn dances on the counter in Girl in the Video Game Store. Stick around, guys. Hello. I'm a zombie. For decades, people like me have been portrayed as mindless, flesh-eating monsters. But these hurtful stereotypes about the undead are just plain wrong. Well, mostly wrong. We do eat brains. But we also have hopes and dreams and fears and emotions, just like you. And that's why it's so painful to see films and video games reveling in our destruction, our decapitation, and murder. Headshots hurt, but not just in our heads, also here, in our hearts. So please listen to my plea for tolerance. Say no to human on zombie violence. Let's give peace a chance.
first met death metal band Distended Warranty when they performed the hit single Red Ring of Death in 2007. But despite having tons of fan requests for their return, it was not that easy for them to record a follow-up. See, writing songs is easy. It's finding tech to be angry about that's that hard. So here's Distended Warranty with I Hate Because I've Had. Is that an iPad? Great, I got an ass to wipe. We waited for years. I sacrificed the lamb. Now we shed family tears. Where's the video cam? Steve said Netflix sucked. It sat on his throne. How creative Apple pitch soon the standard iPhone. Who needs USB? This thing's got 3G. One more thing. Bend over. Here comes AT&T. You know y'all. Backlit screens aren't good for reading. You know y'all. Web experience is so misleading. You know y'all. Lack of flash has the nerdies pleading. Hope this iPad has wings. My vagina's bleeding. iPad. You don't want me so sad, but there's fun to be had. iPad. Brings all that books so much more joy galore than I store. Lockdown. DRM. They own you. Loosen up that turtleneck. Hey, Steve Jobs. Multi-touch. All these nuts. Don't make me ask to multitask. Yeah. Singer-songwriter Perry Grip has been a long-time uh, show favorite here in the AOTS offices. Originally, when he recorded Girl at the Video Game Store, he just asked if Olivia Munn would do the VO of the girl on the track. But executive producers Vinnie Rutherford and Joshua Brentano, standing right over there, decided to produce the entire music video and premiered at the Attack of the Show panel at the 2010 San Diego Comic-Con. Down at the mall is the one who's got it all. The answer to my prayers, just two doors down from Sears. I was surprised, cause they mostly hire guys. She's the girl, she's the girl at the video game. get the membership card. It's only $15 and it comes with a free magazine subscription. I totally want that. She was nice to me. She's my final fantasy. She's the girl. She's the girl at the video game.
return, Sarah Underwood fights crime with her breasts. It's Bustus, the boobiest superhero to ever bust busts. Boobs. The final three episodes of Attack of the Show air next week at 7 right here on G4. Do not miss them because it is your last chance. You may know me from my comic books or my upcoming feature film. In fact, my work has inspired a lot of young women to explore careers in vigilante justice. But while fighting crime may seem exciting, it isn't always glamorous. Stop. Come on. Oh, for crap's sake. I mean, we're fighting crime here, people. Will you lock on the door? This is ridiculous. So before you decide to be a costume crime fighter, remember this. Sometimes being a superhero isn't so super. We're here! All right. How do I land this thing? <laughs> Another fan and staff favorite was Office Jesus. So Office Jesus was created and played by head writer Casey Schreiner, who was tasked with the important network directive, fill in some time for us. Originally named A-Hole Jesus, Casey thought the character was a goner when Comcast took over G4. But the first directive he got from the newly minted network president was, get off his Jesus a new costume stat. Hey, Jesus, where'd you get that donut? I summoned it. Was, could you summon me one? I could. Jesus, is there any more coffee? Not anymore. Mmm. I don't like cream. As you all know, Elizabeth was in a pretty bad car accident last week. Uh, she's still in the hospital. Uh, we still don't know if she's gonna make it, so I thought we should all just take a moment of silence right now. some bull meeting. Chicken wings? Yeah, I can do chicken wings for lunch. All right, I'll meet you outside. Are we done here? I have a meeting to go to. The evolution of Bustus was simple. Network executives told producers, we need a superhero for Sarah. Here is the costume. 
The outfit, based on a poisonous frog, was handed to the writers for inspiration, and then suddenly, fap! Here's Bustus! Fap, fap, fap. shopping to do. Just shoplifting. Excuse me? You know, stealing from the store? I'm putting stuff in my pants and my jacket, then trying to leave. <laughs> it's pretty illegal. Guess you're just gonna have to beat me up or something. Sir, you really should put that food back. I don't wanna have to hurt you. No, I like stealing way too much. You're just gonna have to detain me. So be it. Yes! Disable me! I've alerted authorities, sir. They're gonna be here to pick you up in a few minutes. What the hell? What, you're not gonna smother me? No need, citizen. You've been busted. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm up here. Wait, but you, you sat on that other guy. There's no way we could show you all the characters that have sprung out of the minds of the creative people here at Attack of the Show. And let's face it, sprung out of a need to get something on the air live at 4 p.m. The Hornswoggle Miner, Olivia Seaman's Mysterious Girls, the Wikipedia Attrition, the Wizard in the Wall, and the Ass Cream Man. All of these characters will live on in our hearts and butts. Except for Drunkle Ted, who we're very glad to see go. the crap out of me. A storm is coming. Oh, just stop doing that. Oh, ah, la, 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 la. Christ, you're insane. Insanely brilliant. Yes, it's true. Well, I'm trying to unlock the door. I know, but it's locked. You got to take your hand off. Wait, if I hit the button, it's off. Take your hands off. Just take it. You got to stop playing. Look, just unlock the door. Just take your hand off the door. <laughs> I'm f wasted. Darth Vader's in, uh, he's in the Fat Chicks. That's not nice to say, because I'm in the Fat Chicks, too. Good tidings to you. It is I, Sexy Yeti. Yummy. <laughs> Nothing like a well-plucked bird. We must stuff her neck. <sighs> Are you hot? <laughs> so I have lots of new dresses here for you, Olivia, but I think this one's going to be perfect. Yeah, I'm not really feeling it. You want to show off the girls, don't you? Yeah, later. You have such good skin, Olivia. Thank you. You're right. I need me some horse balls in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I gotta take a dump. She's nailing it, bro. Oh, power crap! <laughs> Guys, he's back. Who's who's back? Olivia, who's... man. Got to disarm these terrorists. What are you gonna do? This. FBI, freeze! Drop your weapons. Drop the gun. 
Come on. What it do, what it do. Florida game winner my own last night with a cheerleader from Indiana. Body by Mattel, raised by Fisher Price. Just the way Jimmy likes them. Oh my god! Jimmy! Yeah. Bears, uh, bears by seven! Boom. I ask you now to pronounce your judgment on those accused. <laughs> Boom. The vote must be unanimous, Jobs Zone. I would rather have Flash on my iPad than have to look at you three any longer. Guilty! Guilty. What are you putting on a little show? <laughs> Promise me you're not going to get any more alcohol tonight. You make me so horny. There's only one way to find out if he's gay for sure. That's for you to f him. Hey. Olivia Munn, sexy lady. Oh, but you know what she true. never that's talks true. about? Her <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Iron Man himself is here! Thank you! Thank you! Hey, Iron Man, are you okay? <laughs> Oh, and one more thing. That's it for our look back on the comedy of AOTS. Just because the show's over doesn't mean these characters will die. Dude Manrod still has a Twitter account. Drunkle Ted has to register his address with the authorities every time he moves. And Bustus will live on forever in the spank banks of a nation. So that's got to be something. I mean, can't say that about Franklin Pierce, the 14th president of the United States. And that guy was the first president to recite the inaugural address from memory. Nerd.